Good morning. Good morning. Good evening. Good afternoon. Hello. 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 How y'all doing? Good morning. Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Thank you. I see you jumping on. I appreciate you. I know y'all like, where you been, lady? I don't know why y'all keep doing that to me. Where you been? What you mean, where I been? Okay, let's try it again. It's 51 houses out here. I got 51 houses out here. Where I been? From the UK. Oh, some of my tribe is on today telling me where you're coming from. I got, look, I got a storm. Look at my gutter over here. The gutter came down, waiting on the gutter people to get out here and fix. Y'all see that gutter hanging out on one of my houses? I was like, what's taking so long? Oh, Miss Courtney, we waiting on the pieces to come. Everything is behind. I said, Y'all want to y'all see that gutter on one of my 51 houses? Come on, y'all. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? For my new people, I'm PamBrownCourtney.com, coming to you live from Little Rock, Arkansas, also known as the lady that owns her own subdivision in Little Rock, Arkansas. Get ready, because I got a moment for you today. How y'all doing? How you doing, queen? You the queen, baby. You the queen, and I ain't mad at it. How you doing? Y'all telling me where you're from today? For y'all who don't know, yes, it's hot. I'm down in Little Rock, Arkansas. Uh, it's hot. It's definitely hot. Real, real hot. I hope I get to stay on long enough to deal with this sun because, you know, the sun will shut your phone down. Oh, look at y'all. Hey, Auntie, I missed you. You ain't missed me as much as I've missed y'all. Y'all like, where you been? Fighting alligators. They said, she said, what? I've been fighting alligators. You know, alligators. You know, situations. Oh, I forgot. Y'all said we on Instagram. We supposed to be just looking like... Miss Quinn, just show them your subdivision. Just show them the streets and the houses and all 51 of them. Just show all that. Tell them how pretty it is and how nice it is and you got it all done and all of that. And, you know, tell them that. Show them your street. Go up there. Show them your street with your name on it. You know, you call your name. What was that song? You mad at me because we didn't call your name? <laughs> okay, let me stop y'all. Show them all that. Show them all that. I'm showing you all that. Yeah, I'm grateful. We celebrating what God has done. We celebrating that God allowed us to get it done. Yeah, we celebrating. I'm celebrating, educating, celebrating, and educating. Yeah, I'm celebrating and educating. But I'm keeping it. I'm keeping it real too. We're in the middle of a pandemic. We're in the middle of a pandemic. So yeah, I'm out here fighting alligators. But I don't mind fighting alligators. Cause you know what? Fighting alligators is just like this subdivision. You know what that means? We win. Oh, did she say that? We win. We fight alligators. We don't mind. Fighting alligators just means situations. But do you see all, You see the streets, don't you? You see all 51 houses, don't you? Google Earth. Hit the link in my bio. Let Google Earth take you and let you see it. So, yeah, you got to do some fighting to get it. You got to do some fighting to keep it. But it don't matter about the fighting, because we win. We win. We win every time. We win every time. All right, I ain't going to stay on here long. For y'all who are new, first of all, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for jumping in. I'm Pam Brown Courtney, live from Little Rock, Arkansas, also known as the lady that owns 51 Homes. Yes, her own subdivision. But I'm here to give you a little bit of information this morning. So, just a little bit. So, I'm going to jump on the car, turn the air on, because it's 100 degrees out here, it feels like it. Yeah, and he says, and you always got black on, it's easy. I tell you, I don't like to spend a lot of time trying to figure out what I got to wear. I don't like that. I got some scrubs on every day so I can go to work. I'm working every day. Now, when y'all invite me to come somewhere and do some stuff with y'all, don't worry. I'm going to show up. I'm going to show up, show out, and going to give you something to look at. I promise. Mm-hmm. Believe me, I will be right. But every day, nah, every day I'm working. I'm working, okay? I'm working. Got it every day. But, we, you know, we fight. Come on, baby. She said we got to fight something. You got that right. We got to fight something. You got to fight something. Yes, yes, yes. So, I want to come on today just to give you this reminder. Today, we are going window shopping. <gasps> Did anybody get that? Where are my <laughs> amazing people to help me out? They said, that lady almost 60. We help her out all the time. Where are my amazing people that help me out all the time? We're going to make a note. We're going window shopping. You know what window shopping is? Does anybody know what window shopping is? 
Does anybody know what window shopping does? Mm-mm. I want y'all to get the... Oh, there we go. Jessica Live. Man, that's my tribe. See, I tell y'all, if y'all don't do nothing but come over here and take pictures of the people that's on my tribe, that's what you should be doing. See, I take information from anywhere I can get it. I always remember this. People, when people are nice, figure out who they are. Because nice like nice. Look, come on, baby. I hear you're a seller. She said, look, look, but not buy. I, look, if you on my live, girl, be taking notes. Guys, take screenshots. Nice people hang out with nice people. Rich people hang out with rich people. Good people hang out with good people. Thieves hang out with thieves. So when you see all these nice sisters being nice and recapping for me and trying to help me, um, it's going to do it that way. Do it this way. Um, yeah, make make sure y'all, you know, sliding into their DM. See what they got going on. Go on their page. See what they're about. See, can't y'all network? Don't be scared. I know sometimes it's scary, honey. Believe me, I think I'm in Atlanta next week. I'm in Atlanta with rats, rants, and rain. Some somebody got me in Atlanta speaking. I'm on somebody's panel next week. These young folks, younger than me, because I'm almost 60, got it going on. And they done invited me to come out there. And I'm going to come out there and show. I'm nervous because of the pandemic. I'm not never, never nervous about speaking. That's just what I do. But I'm nervous about the pandemic. But they said they're going to make sure everything is safe. And they're trying to, you know, do things decently in order. But I understand being nervous about meeting new people, sliding into people's DMs, and sliding into people pages and trying to see what they got going on i understand that i know but you know what you usually can't get it done by yourself no you usually can't get it done by yourself i wasn't able to get all this done by myself i couldn't build 51 houses by myself i mean it don't mean that you can't do things by yourself but if you really want something grand prop it for you and you, you don't have to want it y'all know i only come on here and tell y'all get what y'all want i don't care what y'all want tomato tomato Whatever it is you want in life, I want to help, want to help you get it. Not what your grandmama think you ought to have. Not what the church think you ought to have. Not what your husband think you ought to have. But you ought to be equally yoked. Yeah, you ought to be equally yoked, okay? But uh, I want to help you get what you want, all right? And I'm going to start today by giving you some pointers on what? Window shopping. Don't be afraid to go window shopping. Don't be afraid to go window shopping. I used to go window shopping all the time. Before I bought that hundred thousand dollar car, I used to test drive it all the time. They used to get mad, me and my sister. We go over there, asking could we test drive the car. They see us coming, they be mad. They didn't want to let us test drive. I ain't care. Me and my sister didn't care. They let us test drive. Now they was a little not as nice as I thought they could have been. They said we had to ride with y'all. We said no problem. We don't plan on stealing it. We just want to test drive. We would test drive them and drive them and drive them and drive them and get out and say when we get out and get in our little rag the car, we're going to get one of these one day. My son said, we're going to get one. I said, I know that's right. We're going to get one. You're going to get one and I'm going to get one. Mm-hmm. That's what we said. But we were just test driving. We was window shopping. Come on. Somebody with me. Well, where y'all from? Wherever y'all from today, y'all tell me where y'all from because I need to know where y'all from today because I need to know what crowd I got with me today. Do I have do I have a crowd with me today to understand what I'm talking about? Do window shopping. We would go test drive. Window shopping, baby. Window shopping. Window shopping. I tell my sister I'm getting a black one. She said, I don't care what color. Bottom all. Now I know bottom all with me. I know bottom all with me. I see you, Charlotte. Welcome to baby. Welcome, welcome, welcome. That's my tribe now. Some of y'all been with me since day one. Yes. Where y'all from? Let me know. I know bottom of bottom. Oh, Charleston, South Carolina. Ain't mad. So y'all know how to do it down there too. All right. You know, I had to, I, 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 you know, girl, them ladies from bottom of, they, they, look, they can be a little rough. Memphis in the house, North Carolina, Decatur in the house. Ain't mad. Them bottom of, girl, SC, South Carolina, I think. Them bottom of chicks down there. South Florida, they just a different kind down there. I like them. They got that fire in them. They from Baltimore. They got that fire. It's good. We got that fire. Atlanta in the house. Philly in the house. Florida. South Florida. I appreciate y'all. I appreciate y'all. Y'all got to go window shopping. Don't be scared to go window shopping. I see you, Texas. 
don't be scared to go win the shot. We will test drive those cars. And your bottom us guys be lit, y'all do, because y'all be sending me all catalog. I got more people to buy my course and DM me and ask me to help them through their real estate in Baltimore, D.C., than anywhere else. It's Courtney. Uh, okay, let me get back to my story because these Baltimore girls are having me going. Don't be afraid to go in the shopping. We would drive them fancy cars. We were number 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. They let us come over there and they say, when we were young, they just we could just look at them. We couldn't wait to get 21. Well, you got to be 21 to test drive them. Okay, no problem. Ooh, as soon as me and my sister turned 21, she beat me to it a couple of years. We was over there test driving. We was over there. Yeah. Oh, baby, your energy is contagious. You know why? Because <laughs> good like good. Great like great. You like my energy because you got the same kind, baby. Good stuff, no good stuff. That's all. That's all that is, baby. <laughs> so celebrate yourself. <laughs> celebrate yourself today for being connected to the woman with the good energy because good energy is connected to good energy. So I celebrate you. Thank you for being here, baby. We test drove those cars for five to six, seven years, but we kept going over there. Finally, one day they decided, shoot, you know what? We're just going to let these people have this car. They let us drive it by ourselves. What they do that for? It was on then. It was on then. Me and my sister looked at each other. We said, we agree. We getting these cars. Uh, what's the moral of the story? I think I done went through five of them. I don't want to drive them no more. I done, ooh, did she say that? I think I'm on number five or six. I don't want them cars no more. And I want y'all to have them. Don't miss that. I want y'all to have them, celebrate, and all of that. Don't miss what I I think I'm on number five. I don't even want them no more. I got one in my driveway now. I don't even drive. I'm trying to figure out how to give it away and be a blessing to myself and be a blessing to somebody else in the process. I don't even want them no more. I done been through five of them. And yeah, she got hers too. Yeah, we do that together. We do that thing like that together. So you want to hang out with people that want you to win and them to win too. You didn't hear me say I've been through five. She ain't got one. No, she got what she wanted too. And she got one of them. Yes, she did. Yeah, got one of them too. Get what? Did she say that? Window shopping, baby. Go try it on. See what it feel like. Go try it on. See what it feel like. I don't care what it is. If it's that man, if it's that woman, go out on a blind date, baby. She might be the one, but you can get your home your skills up. Ain't no problem with that. Go out on a blind date. Go out on a date. Oh, I've been hurt so bad before, Miss Cody. People have done me so wrong. I know. That's why I'm going to be in Atlanta next week. Because people have done me so wrong. They done stole my information. They done stole from me. If I tell y'all what people have done to me, y'all be like, yeah, dang. It don't matter. That's why I'm going to Atlanta. Because I'm walking what I talk. I be telling y'all to push through y'all fears. Push through y'all situations. I'm like, I done got too old for this. I'm almost 60. I don't want to be dealing with these people that don't have no character. These lying, trifling young people that don't understand that your name means something. And a, stealing ten or $15,000 or $50,000 or messing up people's reputation name over some money ain't worth it. I said, I'm sick of dealing with these young folks. I'm sick of it. I'm not dealing with these young folks. But how I'ma tell you how, how I'ma do that and then tell y'all y'all got a network. How I'ma do that? How I'ma do that? No, you gotta keep doing it all over again. Cause see, we not fighting each other. We fighting spirits, principalities that are not us. Come on now, it ain't even about us. It's about something bigger than us. Somebody sent me that this morning. Stay focused now, Miss Courtney. Cause we not fighting each other. We fighting spirits that don't. They ain't us. This is about principalities and things that don't have nothing to do with us but it's okay because we know in the end we 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 do like covenant code i said what you mean we win you got it done didn't you it's finished over there ain't it yeah it's finished yeah we win so i y'all gotta i gotta walk if i'm a walk if i'm a talk to talk i gotta walk the walk so yeah i will be in atlanta next week on somebody's panel talking about covenant code and talking about real estate because really i just come on here to tell y'all what I believe. I believe entrepreneurship and real estate can be good for you and your family. And this is how it works. That's all I, that's it. That's it. 
I believe entrepreneurship is good for your family. And I come on to tell you about my experiences in entrepreneurship in real estate because it's been good for me and my family. That's it. It's over. That's it. That, that's it. I, and I got the proof of concept to show you that it has. And then if you like it, you get to say, hey, man, I want to look into that. I just like you to be provided with options. That's options. Because a lot of the times we haven't had what we want because we haven't been exposed to the options. That's why I tell you to go dating. Oh, I've been out on dates. People tell you, God, you got a sweet husband. I know it. Because I went through some first. Ooh, what? Yeah, I went through some so I knew what I did want. I went through some, went out, got, went out. Look, look at these. Thank you, baby. Options. Yeah. You can't take advantage of something that you don't know exists. Yes. Honey, go window shopping. Go out on a date. D is sliding that lady's DM today and say, hey, I was just wondering. I've been looking at your page. I like your page and seem like uh, you got a lot going on. I didn't know if you were single. I didn't know if that was inappropriate or how, how you do that. But, you know, I just wanted to see maybe, you know, if you maybe you want to do dinner, we can Skype. Maybe we can talk over the phone, whatever. The, whatever. Slide. Window shopping, baby. Don't be scared to window shop. I got that fancy car because I was window shopping. I saw it with my natural eye. Then I got it in my spirit, man. Then I got it in my mouth and started talking about it. Me and my sister said, we're going to get these cars. So I saw it first. I had to see it. I couldn't get what I didn't see. I had to see it. Window shopping. Go window shopping. What you want? What you want? And whatever it is you want, that's up to you. That's up to you. It ain't no right, wrong, tomato, tomato. But go window shopping. Go look at it. Go see what it feel like. Sit down. You want to know how? Sit down with get approved for the mortgage. I think it's the mortgage guy. The mortgage guy is the guy who invited me down there to speak on his panel. Y'all look him up. The mortgage guy. That's him, the mortgage guy. I'm going to be on his panel. Send him a DM. Tell him Pam Brown told you. Give me a mortgage. How do I qualify for a mortgage? Miss Pam told me to go window shopping. I see you, 1908. Thank you for the love. Good morning from Chicago. Y'all know I love y'all when y'all talk back to me. I hear you, baby. She said the power's in the tongue all day long. You have what you say. You heard me say I was fighting alligators. Yeah, I am. But you also heard me say I win. We winning. I'm fighting some alligators, but we winning. They losing, so it don't matter. And we know we got to be in a fight. We fight against principalities. We are fighting. You going to fight, period. I tell people, well, I ain't trying to be all that rich and stuff. I ain't trying to get all that money. So everybody talking about money. Everybody talking about money. Everybody want to talk about money. Money, money, money. Everybody talking about I want to be happy. I'm trying to everybody talking about money. All that money brings so much situations. All, all that money brings so much situations. Good morning from Chicago. I hear you, baby. Money brings situations. Yeah. Being poor brings situations. So you need food stamps. You need WIC. You need, uh, come on now. You need housing. And I ain't knocking under that because I grew up on that stuff. So don't play with me. Don't come for me because I'll come back to you. Don't play with me. I grew up on all that. That ain't what I'm talking about. I'm saying, you you over there talking about, I don't want to deal with all that. They got to, you know, you got to get accounts. You got to get CPAs. You got to go through all this. You got to talk to people. You go down there to get food stamps, you got to tell them who living in your house, who you sleeping with, who you date, do your mama, do your daddies come to you, play with your babies, do they stay there, do they stay at night sometimes, how many baby daddies you got, who you sleeping with, can they look through your closet and see if any men clothes there, any women clothes there, don't play with me, you going to be fighting against something, period, period, so you might as well be fighting for something you want. You're not going to go down there and just say, here, I need, I need $2,000 food stamps, wig, housing, and all of that. And they just go, oh, no problem. We like the way you look. Just sign. We want to see your check. We want to see your last five checks. We want to see uh, <clears throat> how many kids you got. Four, you got four kids. Okay, how old are they? Were they births for kids? Ten for kids? How many baby daddies? They all, did you see what the same guy all the time? You got four or five different baby daddies. Like, God dang, what the heck are these people want on your bed? That ain't how it go, Miss Corden. What? And we're going to send somebody out to do an inspection, an unannounced inspection. <clears throat> we don't just want you to give us this information. We're going to send somebody to do a pop-up inspection to make sure you're not sleeping with little Earl because you say he ain't there at the house. 
Girl! And y'all have nerve to tell me you don't want to take chance fighting on all this stuff? Come on. You better fight for something you want. And ain't nobody knocking those situations because I have lived in them. My mama worked two jobs and made such little money that we still qualified for food stamps. Oh, let me finish that. She worked two full-time jobs and still made such little money that we qualified for food stamps. Amen. So I ain't knocking that. But if she was alive today, she wouldn't be working nowhere. Because when you know better, you do better. I'm sorry, she would be working. Working, doing what she does best. Having an early morning prayer with all her sister friends who used to come over at 5 o'clock in the morning and pray from 5 a.m. to 7 or 6.45 when we had to get up. Yeah, she would be running the prayer ministry in my house in my house like she was doing in hers or she'd be running it in her house and me and my girlfriends would be going over there at 5.30 in the morning for 5.30 and 7 o'clock prayer. Yeah, that's the work she would be doing because that was some serious work there. That, that that work that she put in on that is the reasons why, that is in part some of the reasons why I got some of the blessings I got today, okay? So, what am I trying to say? Yeah, come on now. Come on now. We're going to have to fight for something. You got to decide what you want to fight for. Go win the shopping. Let me stay on task. Go win the shopping and look at what you want. Go win the shopping and look at what you want and be prepared to fight for it. You don't have to fight for it. They ain't going to give it to you, baby. They ain't give you no free food stamp. They ain't give you no free Medicaid. They ain't give you no free check for your kids. You got to tell them your kids is special, special needs. You got to take them to a doctor to say they special needs. You got to take them every so often to say that they special needs. You got to take them every now and then to say that they got some type of behavior problem. They got all kinds of stuff they make you do. I don't understand all that stuff. I really don't. I don't understand that. But that's probably why I'm not in the government system. Because if you need it, you say you need it, you sign it, I'm going to let you have it. I don't need to know who's sleeping at your house. I don't need to know who coming to visit your house. I don't need to know that. I don't need to tell you that you can't have some type of support at your house. I'm not, I'm not with that. That's probably why they don't have me in those type of positions. But that's okay. Because that's not my calling. My calling is to come on live and tell y'all to go in the shopping. And know that the same father that created you. And gave you the desire that are in you. It's the same one that's going to help you bring them to fruition. Oh, that's what I'm here to tell you. That, I, he didn't give me that job. I don't have that job at the welfare office. Probably because we wouldn't have no welfare office. You said, wait a minute, I probably would have gave away all the welfare. Because if the people need it, I want to give it to them. If you need it, who want to come down to the welfare office and ask for food stamp and a check? Who want to do that? Yeah, you know what? I wasn't going to say this, but God just brought it up. So this is a teachable moment. I'm going to have to go and give it out because when God gives it to me, I got to do it. I didn't mean to go this way, but I'm going to have to. For you all who are in positions, because a lot of my tribes, the people that are on here, y'all are in positions where you can be a blessing to a person. Make sure you are a blessing to the person. When the person comes into the welfare office and they looking like a million dollars, do not automatically assume that what they don't need nothing. You don't know nothing about them people because I got a niece they can outdress you from Goodwill. Now they'll give you $10,000 and tell you to go shop. And I will give her a hundred and she will stand next to you and beat you every time. Did you hear me? So don't be judging them people. You don't know nothing about them people. So this is a teachable moment. I didn't mean to go this way, but God took me this way. But don't do that. If you are in a position to be a benefit to somebody, be a benefit. How can I help you, man? When I tell you that's got me in more doors than I can, I can, I need to do a master class on that. How can I help you? What are you here for today? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. You at the right place. We sure can. Yes, ma'am. I don't care what she drove. Miss Courtney, you see what she driving? You see that bag she got? I don't know nothing about that bag. I don't know nothing about her bag. I don't know if her ex-husband who used to beat her to death bought her that bag and she got it in a divorce settlement. I don't know nothing about that lady, but she's standing in front of me saying she needs some help. That's all I know. Come on, y'all. Come on. We window shopping today. We window shopping for everything we want. Window shopping. Don't just window shop for the house and the new car. 
and the love of your life. Window shop for the good relationships. I'm window shopping. I got issues too. I'm window shopping for better relationships. Yes. I'm window shopping, baby. I'm window shopping for the right people in my tribe. I told y'all I'll be in Atlanta next week. I don't, y'all said this lady don't go nowhere. She don't fool with people. How I'm going to tell y'all to fool with people and collaborate and I don't do it. I know I've been hurt. I know I've been sad. I know I've been frustrated. I know people have stole from me. I know people have lied on me. I know people have taken advantage of my kind. I know all of that. But how I'm going to get on here and tell y'all to go do it and I don't do it. No, I can't do it. I can't do it. And I can't hide behind the pandemic no more. I'm going to have to step on that then. Going to have to do it. Going to have to step on that then and do it. You telling them to do it? So, I will be in Atlanta next week. Y'all look up. I think his name is the mortgage guy. I wish I knew how to do this stuff and tag him and tell y'all more about that. I don't know how to do all that. But evidently, he don't care. He said, you, you got the proof of concept, lady. You the real deal. So, we, we yeah. You come on down here and talk to us young people. Yeah. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, the beautiful black woman. See that? See that energy? I tell y'all, y'all better look them up. Look them up. Y'all see what they say? Preach queen, beautiful black woman. Look at them people that, see, them the type of people that, look at there, look at there at the mortgage guy, 504. Thank you for the tag and the plug. Thank you for that. Because y'all know I'm doing the best I can. See, that's why I can talk to y'all about other people. You would think somebody got 51 houses, got all this stuff I got going on. People like, lady, you should be blowing up. You should be all over social media. You should be, man, all this stuff. I'm doing everything I know how to do. I'm doing it the best that I can. And I believe God is going to help you keep going further. But just, just like I'm doing the best that I can. Most people are doing the best that they can with what they got. <gasps> Teachable moment. And I used myself. You would think I'd be all over the place. She got this. She got that. She got this. I got what I know how to do. I know how to get this subdivision done. I know how to help you own a house. I know how to help you own a duplex. I know how to help you get your mortgage approved. I know how to tag you with the right people to help you get that. I'm good in that arena. This social media stuff, I'm learning all that. Other people are the same way. They're the same way in anything they got going on. Anything. So you got to remember that. You got to remember that when you're dealing with people. Because you want people to give you that same courtesy. Ooh, did she say that? You want people to give you that same courtesy. I know I do. I know I do. See, when you win the shopping, win the shop for everything. Win the shop for everything good. Everything good. Not just good clothes. Not just good cars and shoes and houses. When is y'all for good people, good employees, good business partners, good people to collaborate with? Good. I want, you know, I, okay, I'm gonna have to get off. I gotta tell y'all this, then I gotta get off. I remember this young lady that used to work for my husband and I, for y'all who don't know, my husband is a neurologist and epileptologist. And she used to work in the clinic. And she came in at about, uh, about a year. She'd been with me about, mm, right at a year. And she gave me a two-week notice. And I brought her in because I, I liked her work. She wasn't exactly what I wanted, but she was pliable. Some of y'all will catch that. She was pliable. So I was like, okay, I can work with this. And I said, okay, you leaving? I said, okay, no problem. I said, well, I always like to do an exit interview. You're not going to get any problems, but I always like to know what I could do better. Are you leaving because it was something I didn't do, something I could have done better? Because... I, I'm still growing. So if it's something I need to do better, something I need to do different, I said, I need to know. So if you don't mind, will you share that with me? What could I do better that would have made your stay? Could I pay you more? You make it going to get a big a raise or better hours or what? Do you mind sharing? She said, no, I don't mind telling you, Miss Cornette. And I appreciate the job. I appreciate that you gave me a chance. I said, okay. I love the way these young people talk. They just so free spirit like that. When I was growing up, I couldn't talk like that. I had to watch every single word. So, me talking like her is a compliment to her. So, don't y'all miss it. A compliment to her free spirit. Uh, no. I said, okay, well, you, you're not getting more money? No. For a matter of fact, I'm taking less money. Okay, so you're going to leave my job and you're taking less money. Mm hmm Okay, so what's the problem? <clears throat> or what, what, what is it? You don't like the staff? You don't like our hours? <clears throat> Miss Queen, you want me to be real with you? I said, please be real with me. Please. Miss Courtney, you act like these people here, I mean, 
Yeah, y'all have a clinic and y'all busy and your husband is a neurologist and an epileptologist. So people are sick. They have seizures and falling out. But you take this stuff way too serious. You and your husband. Y'all just take this stuff way too serious. I said, okay, we take it way too serious. What do you mean? I said, can you give me an example? Well, the one, okay, this the one rule that gets on my nerve. Okay, I get off at 430, right? I said, yes, ma'am. So if I answer the phone at 415, and it's a long conversation about somebody had a seizure, they falling out, and um, they need they they just don't know what to do, and their parents on the phone crying and whatever. Your deal is, I got to take the message, write up the message, pull the patient's chart, get all the patient's information together, ask the patient to hold, go interrupt Dr. Courtney, because it's an emergency. He might be with a patient, it don't matter, but you go get interrupt Dr. Courtney, tell Dr. Courtney you got an emergency on the phone, and... Um, you know you need him to help you with it i said right that's what we do miss Courtney. sometimes that means we get stuck here 5 30 5 45 6 o'clock i said okay do, do i pay you overtime do i pay you overtime do you have you ever worked for me and not got paid more than you work for because i do that by design if my people work 30 hours i give them 33 34 if i promise them 10 dollars an hour which i've never had anybody work for me for 10 i like to start them off with 20. Then I give you twenty two. I give you five thousand dollars for Christmas bonuses, twenty thousand. So do you ever work and you not get a benefit from it? Is what I asked. Her. She said, No. I said, So what's the problem? She said, I just don't you know, it's just too serious. It's just too serious. You know, if I get off at four thirty, I wanna be closing my desk down at four fifteen and being able to walk out at four thirty. Really? Okay. Well, hopefully you can do that, but if we have an emergency call where it's somebody, my phone is freezing, y'all, so y'all gonna have to give me some hearts and let me know y'all can hear me. That's technology. I can't deal with that. I'm gonna keep on going so y'all get the story because I need y'all to get it. It's a teachable moment. I said, we'd like you to walk out at 4.30, but if you got a patient on the phone and it's a 911, don't you want to stay on the phone and, and get the thing to the doctor so you make sure you get it taken care of? Don't you want, don't you think that's urgent? Miss Courtney, that's all the time in here. So we always running late or it's always something, something like that. Thank you, baby. Thank you. I appreciate that. Thank you. I need to know y'all feeling me. I said, okay. So you just think that's too much. Yeah, that's too much. I don't want to do that. I said, okay. I said, has there ever been a time where you needed to leave to go get your kids and somebody else wouldn't cover? I said, cause I know I'm here. And anytime you need me to cover, I'm here. So you can go get your kid and I'll take over. Just give me the call. Now it's just the energy in here. You want these people in here. You want everything. If they call today out of medicine, you said we got to get back with them within 24 hours. Sometimes it might need to be three or four days before we can get back to them with their medicine. Okay, so they falling out having seizures. They out of their medicine. And you said we might not call them back for two or three days. Yes, I just can't take the pressure that I don't want. I talked to other folks at other doctor's office. They said they don't call their patients back for two or three days. Sometimes the nurse don't call them back for four or five days. It, it, you, whenever they can get to them, they got a lot of people. We not going to do that over here. We going to call our patients back in, in, in 24 hours. So I understand it's probably not the right fit for you. We wind too tight over here. We want, and I understand that. And she is right. We're not talking about her. She is right. A lot of doctors' offices do that, and that is their right. They get to run their office like they want to, and we don't have anything negative to say about it. But over here, you're gonna call them back in 24 hours, or you're gonna give us the note, and we're gonna call them back within 24 hours. Me, myself, the doctor, we'll stay till we have to stay. We gonna call. Well, that's why I'm leaving. You asked, and that's why I'm leaving. I said, okay, no problem. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. And I'm giving you your two-week notice. I said, and today's your last day. I'm going to pay you for those two weeks and give you some extra money because you didn't have to share this with me. And I really appreciate you. I really appreciate you. Don't miss. We talking window shopping. Don't y'all miss what we talking? Window shopping. Because see, I'm window shopping for employees. I'm window shopping for partners. And I'm window shopping for people who are like-minded with me. We, I need to be equally yoked with you. Because she and I weren't equally yoked. And I wished her well. You listening? I wished her well. But guess what happened? About a year later, she went working for me. And my husband gets a call in the middle of the night through the phone. And I answer the phone. I say, hello, can I help you? Dr. Courtney's phone. How can I help you? 
uh, this doctor so and so in the ER and uh, at so and so in the hospital, and we was calling because uh, we got a lady down here that had a stroke, and Dr. Courtney is a neurologist and wanted to know if he could come and see. I said, he's not doing hospital work at that hospital right now. We're not on schedule to do any hospital work there. I know, but the the lady is a mother to one of your past employees. I said, one of my past, who is it? And he gave me an answer. Was, oh, okay, what they got? She said she's requesting you. She requesting Dr. Courtney because she knows Dr. Courtney is one of the best neurologists there is. And she know he'll come. We already called other neurologists. They ain't got it here. It's been over an hour ago. And she asked that we call Dr. Courtney because they said he, she know he'll come. And I got the phone on speaker. So here my husband go with Pam, her mama done had a stroke. I said, I'd be darned if you move. Oh, no, no, no. I guess I ain't that God and that holy and that devout. I guess I'm not. Take me to the king. I got nothing else to bring. I'm all tired out. Come on, y'all. Y'all know what I'm saying. I said, no, you're not moving. No. I said, what did you say? I said, put her on the phone. I said, hello, young Miss Gordon. My mom and I had a stroke. Could you please let Dr. Gordon come and see her? And it's that nothing. Oh, Miss Gordon. The doctor ain't came. They done called the doctor two or three times. Is on call. They done called the doctor two or three times. Is on call. And they came. And they said that if my mom don't see a neurologist quick, she might be stuck with her body froze on one side. And they got some stuff. If you get to see the doctor right away, it could help really good. Right. I know exactly what you're talking about. It's called TPA. And if the doctor get there within 10 or 15, 20, maybe an hour, I don't want to be the doctor. I think it's a certain amount of time. And, and if the doctor can give it to you, you don't see these people walking around dragging their arm and stuff like that because they were able to get that. Yeah. I understand that. I said, yeah, I know. But they got a neurologist. And she said, but he ain't came. Could you please send Dr. Courtney? I said, no, ma'am. I said, remember, you said our standards are too high. And he here right here. I said, he didn't get up out the bed, putting up on his shoes, and he ain't going to step. Because I'm telling him, if you go out that door right now, brother, you're not coming back. You ain't coming back to me. Don't come back here to me if you go out that door. Because I'm tired of people taking your kindness for weakness. I'm tired of you being used. I'm tired of myself being used. But my, I'm, I'm supposed to be a hedge of protection around you. So if you walk out that door, brother, don't come back. She said our standards were too high. She quit our office because she said we wanted them to stay late, take care of the patients, and treat these patients like they God. Ain't that what she said? And we weren't mad. We gave her pay. We gave her a good reference. She got another job. She working in a doctor's office. Well, Pam, I took an oath to do no harm. I took that oath. That's what my husband said. I took an oath to do no harm. I need to, you know, I said, right, to do no harm to yourself. And to do no harm to your wife first. You took an oath to yourself. What good is you to be a great doctor to everybody else and a, and a lousy doctor to yourself? That's not your patient. You ain't never seen the patient. They got a doctor supposed to be over there going to take care of their patient. Now, if she was my employee, you are right. You wouldn't have to worry about jumping up trying to be ready. I would be in the car ready to drive you while you're tying up your shoes on the way. Sure would. But we make decisions that we have to live with. Decisions have consequences. I'm, I'm dealing with some consequences now. Some decisions that I made. And I got to deal with them. Me. Me. Oh, when you went to shopping, make sure you went to shopping for a lot more than, than a bag. And an outfit. And a car. And a house. You better know what you went to shopping for. I said, young lady, you said my standards were too high. Remember that? I said, no, Miss Gordon, but this is my mama. Miss Gordon, this is my mama. Miss Gordon, this is my mama. I know you wouldn't do this. This is my mama. You know what I told her? That lady on the phone that you was talking to, she was somebody's mama. She was somebody's auntie. She was somebody's child. She was somebody's mama. They were in the living room crying, doing what you doing. This is my mama. Will y'all please get her her seizure medicine? This is my mama. We know y'all about to close. They were sitting there crying, doing that. But it feels different when it hits home, don't it? It feels real different when it hits home, don't it? I know it do. 
Y'all better watch. You going window shopping? You going window shopping? Don't stop at the car lot. Mm -mm. Don't just stop at the car lot. Don't stop at the house. Don't stop at the clothes. Don't just stop at the man. When you going window shopping, make sure you checking it all out. Because that's what we do when we do window shopping. Because we're going to come back and buy. Like I told you, me and my sister went back and bought them fancy cars. When you doing going window shopping, go deep. Go deep in the window shopping. See what they're made out of. Will they be there when you need them? Or y'all just uh, Instagram friends. Y'all just going, oh, y'all vacation friends. Girl, let's go to Puerto Rico. Let's go to Rome and Italy. Then we get to, oh, we're going to, oh, did y'all see what's in Palm, Rome and Italy and this and that? Them, them kind? I don't need them kind of friends. No, ma'am. I don't need them. I need them kinds when my when when my back up against the wall. When my back up against the wall. I need those that's gonna be covering my back. Cause see, I got some of y'all that understand when he said put on the whole armor of God. Put on the whole armor. You ain't got no armor for your back. He didn't give you no armor. The breastplate the salvation ain't no armor for your back. He ain't, get, ain't no read that scripture. Ain't no armor on there for your back. Your back is exposed. Mm, why your back exposed? Who you got covering it? Who you got covering your back? Go back and read it. I know how y'all saying, oh, man, ain't you read it? I know. I ain't coming on you being no Bible scholar now. That's my sister. She do all that reading and studying and all that. I got a few scriptures here and there. And then when my back get up against the wall, then I get a lot more scriptures. Because I, I know from which my help come from. I know from where it come. Y'all got it? We went to shopping. We went to shopping for great relationships, new houses, new cars, children, unborn children for the women who want them that can't have them, for the women who want, who had it, didn't want it, who, and, and didn't want it and not the right place to have it right now. We went to shopping for you to connect with the woman that's calling me crying, telling me she want a baby. Because you went to shopping for somebody going to love the baby like you love it. And you don't want it. Not that you bad. You don't want it. You can't take care of it. It's not a good time in your life. And you over here praying that God give you somebody that will love it like you love it. And she over here praying that God would just send her a baby. Because she can't have one. Come on, man. We all went to shopping. When you find somebody tell you they ain't went to shopping, watch it. Watch it. Watch it, baby. They went to shopping. They might not tell you, but they went to shopping. I'm window shopping. You say, how you window shopping? And you own your own subdivision. No, I don't. My investors and my mortgage people own it. When I got the deed in my hand and you get that invitation to the deed burning celebration, then I own it. So I own it, but I need the deed to prove it. You say, what that mean? I own it in the spiritual realm. And when the spiritual realm and I keep working together and they give it to me and I have that deed burning celebration that I'm going to have, then I own it. Yeah. I lost some of y'all there, but that's okay. We went to shopping. Y'all go have an amazing day. I thank y'all for giving me the most valuable asset that you gave me today is your time. Go out and be the best you can be. And remember, be kind. Be kind. You coming to it, baby. You definitely coming to the deed burning celebration. You've been with me since day one and ain't been doing nothing but showing me love, herself. Yes, ma'am, Charlie. Some of my tribe been on here for since day one. Be kind. If you work at the food stamp office, when that girl come in there looking like, dang, bang, bang, bang. Say good morning, lady. Good morning, ma'am. How are you? I'm good. I was here to, I, I was, uh, I, I've been on furlough and, and I've been, um, I got kids and the COVID is and threw me off and I, we just need some help and I don't really know how to do this because I ain't never been down here for no food stamps. First ma'am, could you hold your head up and look at me? Because you look amazing and I'm here to serve you. So don't be looking down. That's what we hear. I have a job because you need food stamps or you need some service. You need some resources. If you didn't need some food stamps or resources or for me to be here to help walk you through this process, then I would not have a job. So could you hold your head up and give me that beautiful smile because you look like a million bucks. It don't matter if you don't have a dollar. And I'm going to help you get this, okay? I'm going to help you get this. How many children you have? Okay, do you need instant food stamps? Do you need them instantly? Do y'all have any food at home now? No, you don't. Okay, so you need emergency food stamps. Okay, because we got something for emergency food stamps. Then we got something to put you on the food stamp program. And then we got some other stuff. But right now, we need to get you emergency food stamps. 
Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. And that's a beautiful bag you got. Beautiful bag you got. Let's get these emergency food sales that you can put them in there. Don't cost you nothing to be nice, baby. And somebody's always watching, even if it's just the father. Okay? Thank y'all for being nice to me. I appreciate y'all. Have a good day. See y'all next time. Remember, the power is in your hand to be all you want to be. Not Miss Courtney. It's in yours. So if you're winning, it's on you. If you're failing, it's on you. If you're failing and you're trying to win, it's on you. If you won and you failed, it's on you. If you're failing and now you're getting ready to win again, it's on you. All of it's on you. That's why I'm fighting alligators. Because I know I'm going to win. And I'm going to keep fighting. The only time I won't be fighting is when I get cold. And when I get cold and my head get cold, guess what? I won anyway. Because now I'm going to be with the father. Take care. Tribe 9 for life. Y'all give me everything that I give y'all. Don't y'all ever forget it. Y'all give it right back to me, baby. All of the goodness that y'all say I give y'all and the kindness that y'all feel, I don't come on. And I talk to y'all because y'all send it right back to me. Energy knows energy and energy feels energy. So thank y'all for the goodness that y'all give me. See you later. Bye-bye.